Hello everyone and welcome to this week's, not week is it, this episode of The Human Show. How the devil are we? You're doing all right? The energies are a bit weird. We've got a new moon this morning. Is that right, Claire? Yes, we have a new moon in Aquarius. It's actually tonight. I think it's 22.59. Okay. So we have the new moon. Um, and definitely the energies are really scorpionic i that's what i my feeling is um i don't know about you guys yes being one myself i do feel it mm -hmm. i've been particularly antagonistic and difficult this week i'm but having to curb my, my tongue justice. yeah mm -hmm. yeah well except i'm not curbing my tongue i'm i'm saying what i think and it's not going down well i'm not popular right now but i'm not having nonsense no <laughs> Yeah. And I think that they're kind of like Pluto's an Aquarius as well. And everyone else is jumping in there alongside it. So it's and then there's a square between Pluto and Taurus and Uranus and the moon. So that kind of is bringing up the integrity side of things. So Pluto is very much about shadow transformation, God of the underworld, all that kind of jazz. And um Hit that energy, that scorpionic energy is deep water energy. So it's deep emotions that have perhaps kind of lurked beneath the surface for a long period of time and now being cleared and brought to the light. So it kind of feels a bit, I really feel it feels a bit oily and a bit kind of, you know, dark. And as you say, people speaking their truth, like Truth is so important and standing in your power as an individual and just being like, actually, no more excuses. If you don't like the way I do things, then that's just the way it is, because it's self-care is a priority. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I attended a really lovely um, workshop on Monday night with my friend Karen Oliver and um she she did this beautiful exercise where you you make a circle on the floor and color it and bring in things that you want in it put it in a place where you feel really safe and and relaxed and comfortable and um sounds and smells and everything else you want in it and you step into it and that is your circle and outside of that that's where your boundaries end and it's it was designed to help us um you know, be clear about our boundaries in a kind and loving way, which being a Scorpio, sometimes I forget. It's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> sometimes I just like, that's it. <laughs> you need to hear this now. And I'm not going to mince my words. But, you know, all people hear when I do that, and I have now nearly 70 years of being one of these people, Um, I, I feel like I maybe could get them to listen to the words better if I delivered them in a less of a an aggressive fashion. So I'm still working on that because <laughs> I do want them to hear the words. I don't experience you. I can't even imagine you coming across with an aggressive energy. You've got such a lovely energy. <laughs> That's because we haven't crossed it yet. <laughs> Maybe if we crossed it, it would be different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I'm under stress and I'm not under stress and I'm with you, so it's not going to come out but um i do swear like a trooper and uh, words have power you know oh i did this marvelous workshop this week on the wood dragon and um nick haynes from the five institute i've got to mention him again because he was my one of my acupuncture teachers even though he's a little bit younger than me he's he's a wise old soul honestly he's amazing and um, he's doing this Wood Dragon New Year's party all this week. And so he's giving us, he's just so generous, freely giving all this lovely stuff. And um, he, he told us to print off, not print off, write out or, or print off, whatever, um, words that particularly belong to um, the elements. Oops, you can't see it. I've done it. Anyway, last night I put some of the metal element wood words under my water. And honest to God, it tasted different this morning. So if we want to give ourselves a gift. That is something to do. It really is. So just to get this clear, June, it's establishing the words you want. to. So you're talking about the consciousness of water because you're basically writing 
what you want to imbue your water with. And when you drink it, you're basically giving yourself that magic because water holds everything. So you're asking those bits to step forward, valor, courage, love, all that kind of stuff. The, the last night's one were ones were particularly because I've been fighting with admin newsletters and stuff. Effective, simple, completing and releasing. Ooh. Yes. Okay. I'll just get the water because I feel <laughs> she's, she's, gone. Gone. she's gone she's gone she got it and it disappeared on her um but that's a thing but then there's being kind of explicit about what you want because you you'll find that echoing throughout every aspect of what you've asked for because you've made those intentions quite generic like quite big not generic big i like the idea of the boundary circle and kind of you know creating your circle and then you get into the middle of it because that's exactly how it should be shouldn't it Tamar you have to be at the middle of your own world and then you've got your boundaries and it's like actually as a physical way of demonstrating to people so what kind of things did you kind of work on in the circle then June I mean what did you put round it and what did you put in it well it was a lovely group of people and we all did obviously very different things I mean, I, I went for purple first. I have done this exercise in the past, but it was never so powerful. I think the energies right now are really just coming. And, and the more meditating we do, the more I feel it. Absolutely. And, and you know, angelic forces and whatnot. Um, I mean, in the past, I have had exposure to this kind of world over the last 30, 40 years. And, and not really been that like, oh, yeah, OK, that's that's all a bit weird. I'm going to stick to practical healing, <laughs> practical stuff that the rest of the world understands. Acupuncture. Most people understand acupuncture for some things, not not the full gamut of it. But, it, you know, people do. but yeah, so that my circle was purple and it was placed on a beach in the Maldives where my daughter lives and the sound of the waves and um, I had wind chimes and um, the, the, the odor of Palo Santo came in as well. And then she had to step out and step back into it. And then we fold it up and put it in our pocket so that we can take it out whenever we want. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. So it's a sacred place that makes you feel safe is at the center. And that sacred place can be anywhere you want it to be. But it's like, um, yeah, I mean, Tamar, what do you think about that? I think the power of visualization can be really strong if, you, if you're that kind of person. So I've worked with clients where they just they don't like visualization. They're very kind of earthbound. Um, but I think that your brain believes what you tell it. So by creating these visual spaces, you're kind of setting yourself on a path for the day. So all this week I've woken up every day and gone, oh, God. And then I've had that kind of week. So I think it's about getting yourself into the headspace and kind of living it. And by doing your visualization, your exercise, you're kind of committing to it. It's not airy fairy. No, it isn't. So from this, I hope you're going to go off and create yourself a beautiful circle, Tamar. I really need one. When you swing your legs out of bed in the morning, you straight into the middle of your circle and you're like, before you have any other emotions. Now, I wanted to pick something up that you said, June, about love because um and coming from love and light because i have a thing about that and um let me see let be really interested to see what you both think about this right so we've got kind of you know we're all quite different in our approaches so we're going to give quite a good um different but similar so i think that um i feel or i intuit that the kind of the whole energy around at the moment, which is huge releasing, right? So there's huge endings happening. People are realizing friendships don't work for them anymore. People aren't on the same vibration, relationships, jobs, houses, all of this stuff. Pluto is like coming through like a dose of salts and going, no more shall you do this. And the people that are trying to ignore that are having their life lessons flung in their faces louder and louder and louder. That's what happens. Now, when we let go of relationships or relationships let go of us, because it isn't always the case of we're in control of that release of that relationship. Sometimes people decide they don't like us anymore and it's for one reason or another. Generally, 
it happens if you get rejected because you've grown and you've either grown into a place that they can't grow with you or they've grown into a place and you haven't grown with them. I would say it kind of, you know, works like that. Now, when you're releasing, especially if it's been a trauma break because it's been painful because it's triggered, you know, feelings of rejection, da, 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 da. Pe like the way of people have this view, the Hopo Ono prayer of letting everything go with love. Now, it's very hard when you've been hurt to be like, oh, I let go of you with love because you might still feel that you want to, you know, rip that person's eyes out because they've been really unfair or the situation is unfair and it's unjust and, you know, it doesn't have integrity. So my view is the fact that um, the best way I think to do it and I educate people to do it is when you're letting that go, it's in the power of threes is you are letting it go with gratitude for the karmic lessons, a releasing of the karmic ties and love for self in respecting self and welcoming love back in. It's like you haven't given that person or that situation love. You've given yourself love for respecting your boundaries. And for me, that feels more achievable than the Hopo Ono prayer, which is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. It's like, thank you. And like, thank you at the end. <laughs> I, I don't forgive you. Um, I don't love you. And I'm not sorry. So it's kind of like, you know, I found the wisdom in what's happened between us. And I accept the wisdom. And I thank you with gratitude for showing up to give me that lesson. So there's gratitude for the karmic experience and a release. But that's where it ends. The love is all about the self. So what do you guys think about that? Up from June. Yes, as you were talking, I was going to say it's love for yourself, not love for the other. Because you can, we can all aspire to be a being completely full of love and love everything, but it's just not realistic. And I think we have to be realistic. And there are some lessons that you don't really know what they are until a lot further down the line. So I guess, is, is this a valid example? I'm going to share it anyway. So a couple of summers ago, so sometime during the pandemic, an ex-partner of mine got in touch. And they were from 30 years ago. It was a horrible relationship. It was very triggering. He was emotionally abusive. And I wouldn't wee on him if he was on fire. And I got this message through because he Googled me, which is more effort than he ever made in our relationship, mm -hmm. and found me on something or other and messaged me going, oh, I wondered if you'd like to meet up. Apart from the fact he's married, my, my response, well, I didn't respond to him at all because I was holding the power for myself, was what, what relationship did you have? Because they were very, very different. And mm -hmm. I didn't respond because I now have the self-respect and the self-esteem to go, you are coming nowhere near me ever again. But, and so there was no way I could let that go with love. I was like, I hate you. I never want to see you. You can go to hell for all I care. And there's no one way on any planet I'm ever going to give love to that person. So I think it's unrealistic. But I had enough love for myself not to react or respond to him. Is that a fair example? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, he probably wanted your forgiveness, possibly. Or I don't think he did anything wrong. He just wanted to sap my energy again. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what he wanted? It's not even worth spending the effort trying to figure that out. <laughs> how dare he? How dare he come into my life? And it was just, how dare you be in my space again, in my head space, you know? Yeah. Because you needed that challenge to just confirm that you know where your boundaries are. That's why it happened. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And you can send his higher self some love because clearly his no. behavior <laughs> on in this lifetime is not worthy of his higher self. You know, everybody's got one. Self. It's their behavior that's the, the problem. You know, <laughs> this guy's pond scum. I don't think there is a higher self. He's oh, like, no, a come on, everybody non has character. Got, no. <laughs> non-player character and empathy. well no because there but there are people that you know he's obviously really hurt you which is why or hurt you once upon a time which is why mm -hmm. I pulled back from that and it's like it's no the doorway is firmly closed so you know I'm sure someone else finds the light in him it's just not his wife who's trying to cheat on do you think she finds a light in him he's trying to cheat he's married no but I'm aware, married with kids is but he might have just wanted to be friends. No, no. Oh. If, if you're with someone, you don't need to respond. 
that was not an offer of friendship. Oh. No. no. Okay. Really, yeah. 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 Maybe. Wait, calmer on that one. Yeah. And I, I, something else that I've picked up this week is the fact that I've, like, this week's been really tricky, right? So in this new moon, like, friendships like I've just I've been in a number of situ like three situations actually three big situations the first one um was a case of um I have to be careful what I say but you know the the commonality between the situations was the fact that people weren't 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 owning what was theirs mm. they were trying to project because they weren't coming, they weren't ready for integrity and truth. And you get people that just, they can't see the truth because they're not there yet. So it's easier for them to, to cast the blame to someone else external to them rather than owning it. And I think that there's a lot of people that do that because it's easier to sit in judgment of someone else and imagine that they have created and caused you issues rather than recognizing that your own behavior has got you into the situation you've got into, whether that is just simply by not having good boundaries and somebody else has leaped over them and taken full advantage. That's actually your responsibility to manage your own boundaries, not because other people will in Spanish, they've got a lovely word, which is aprovechar. People mm -hmm. will always aprovechar mm -hmm. if they get the opportunity to aprovechar, like take advantage um it's just human nature so i think yeah it's been a really plutonic kind of energy healing clearing and now we're now we're under um rowan right so we've been under birch and we stayed under birch during in bulk so like this clearing 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 you know clear the forest like it's coming back the new like trees of light but it's kind of like it's coming back with truth, integrity, moon, it's shining bright in the forest. And then Rowan's come in with this today, with this energy. And Rowan means bright fire. And so this is kind of like this is the kind of last vestiges of everything getting burnt up in the sacred flame. It's like it's coming up and it's protection. And that's why they make runes out of Rowan tree, because they're magical protection. And when you're reading the omens, you want as much protection as you can get. And Rowan, I think, is the first tree to come into leaf after winter. Um, Silver birch is the first colonizer. Rowan is the is the first to leaf, and this is the second moon since moon phase since winter solstice. So it's like this bright, light, lit fire of kind of Bridget saying, "Right, this is your last cleansing. Jump through the fire," and kind of, you know, cleanse it all away, start with a foundation of truth, rise from the phoenix, like a phoenix from the ashes or a dragon and come back. It's like, you know, there's that energy around and some people, I will shut up in a minute. Some people are gonna find that really difficult because they, not only are they not seeing their own truth, but they are, having to come to terms, especially if they've been rejected by people, et cetera, that they, they're they not comfortable with their differences because their differences have caused them persecution and ostracization in the part, ostracism either, not ostracization. I think I just made up a word, but word. <laughs> trauma. And so they need to heal that trauma to feel confident, to feel who they are before they can move forward. So there'll be people still denying themselves basically, because they're scared of being judged. It's sure protection enough. of ego. Some people's egos are delicate and are, are not in a place strong enough to take that. So until yeah, they yeah. get to that stage, they'll have to wait until next year and maybe try again, because if, they're, if their ego is fragile, their sense of self will be completely destroyed if they then tackle something they're not ready to tackle. Yeah. It's got to be the right time. Yeah. yeah. It's no good forcing things. Things are being forced upon us enough as it is without us having to having to force things on ourselves. I, I think the larch tree is actually the first one to come into bud in the flower essence world. Mm -hmm. And the interesting it's not got leaves. It's got needles. And it's it's the yeah, only right coniferous. Yeah. Well, have a look at it because it will be starting to bud soon well after this cold snap 
but um, it, it the bud of the the pine cone, it's the only coniferous tree that that sheds its needles every year, and then they come back as little soft needles. Yeah. And the pine cone it comes as red, so it's fire again. It's it's absolutely living. So that fits alongside the idea of the rowan as well. I think maybe they're partners in this situation. Oh. Mm. Oh, and I'm really glad you told me that because I don't have a Rowan, but I have a Larch literally there. <laughs> I'm appreciating my beautiful Larch. Oh, yeah. I the love Scorpio them. fire sign just to tie them all together. No, Scorpio is a water sign. Okay. I'm surprised. And school and Pluto rules Scorpio. So we're in an Aquarius new moon, but Pluto is ruler of Scorpio. And that's why I feel that this kind of, the energy of this Pluto transition is just really because it's going across the board, like there's so many planets that have moved into Aquarius and they're kind of in relationship now with, with this energy. It's a kind of like it's drawing it out. It's like, you know, we will have the truth. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and and Pluto and Mars, I mean, Pluto is the outermost partner, if, if you like, I don't know what the word is, to Mars. And Mars is also our ruler so it's like that's why i can end up going and decimating people i mean honestly it's not 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 a pleasant sight and it comes out of nowhere it's totally uncontrollable well and not totally but it's you know it's that's the challenge of being a scorpio we have to learn to to not murder people well you <laughs> use your power wisely that because scorpio yes there's no kind of gray it's like i'm in or i'm out and it's like you know finding a kind of gentleness in that or just in your judgment sometimes you do need to annihilate people but mostly not <laughs> it doesn't make for good co-creation if you're trying to kill <laughs> your 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 collaborators you know people will just run away <laughs> but sometimes but, it could be that you're their karma you might be the lesson they need well, well, absolutely. And it, this is the thing. I think the holo, holo polono, whatever it is, I can never say it. Uh, yeah, um, I think it's more for ourselves. I'm sorry. I love you. Forgive me. And thank you to uh, us. Like you said, I, I think that's that's where most of the hard work is, is actually forgiving ourselves, because what is coming up for a lot of people right now is past errors in judgment and pat, here we go with your error in judgment tamar let forgive yourself for having been with that idiot you know and and just take the lesson from it and that's it and 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 love yourself and say thank you for giving me this lesson mm. that's i think that's what that's about it is there's also a restless energy about as well at the moment so people are feeling restless and they're getting bored with their kind of, and this kind of is going to follow us through February, this sense of kind of any area that restlessness shows up for you, where you just think, oh God, really? Is an indication of where growth needs to happen. And long-term plans are being laid now. So your February is going to reach, whatever you do this month is going to reach far into the future. So it's having some awareness. And it's interesting because, Tamar, you talk about that relationship, so that must have just come into your mind. But there is this kind of energy of us going back to what we were like when we were younger and our aspirations and our hopes. And then kind of where are we now in terms of have we met those? And, you know, would we recognize ourselves if we met, each, met ourselves in this point in time? And would we think, well, you've done well or why are you with that person it's like that doesn't make any sense so you know it's that kind of catching up isn't it yeah so if yeah and burning the, down we should be letting them is what i'm hearing i don't if things are burning down or leaving we let them because it's time yes we do and we see the truth for that and we understand that there's a higher no matter how painful it feels there's a higher kind of intention behind this it's having trust that it's the right thing to happen so well, June, you were going to say something yeah i was i'm just trying to find you know when you were saying about the um 
the questions, mm -hmm. asking the right questions. And oh, well, it wasn't it, but it wasn't you didn't say about questions, but you, you said about the. Um, well, it was it was but some people can't can't do it um, because of your that what I'm going to say is about the five elements. And I'm just trying to find Nick's beautiful um, description of the five elements and the mind and the soul. While you're doing that, I will talk about the wood dragon energy because wood dragon is from now tomorrow. So that has aligned on purpose with this new moon. And that wood dragon energy is about wisdom. So that back, you know, that jumping back in time to jumping into now is wisdom. Think about how far you've managed to come. It's also about kind of abundance. It's um, very lucky in the Chinese regard dragons as really lucky, but wood is very nourishing. It's kind of, you know, and that's what brings in the abundance, et cetera. So it's courage, it's wisdom, it's love. It's all of those kind of energies um, and self, self, feeling good about self is what I'd say. Have you found it yet, June? Yes, I have. I have. Um, so just coming back so I can see you because I want to talk to you while I can see you. Um, yeah, it's, it's, the point is about the five elements. There's the water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. We are in a metal cycle still until 2031. So that is quite interesting because metal is about precision and, you know, details and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's related to the Po, which is the unconscious body soul and mind which is where hypnotherapy gets yep. into which is it's marvelous whereas water is about purpose and willpower which we've just had the two water animals and now we're moving into wood and we're going to have two wood animals which are to do with the hun and the ethereal soul and the imagination now if you're trying to tell somebody a statement and a question the imagination may not be able to cope with it, which is exactly what Tamar was saying. Some people just can't can't do affirmations. That's what you said, isn't it? Mm. So I think that's fascinating. And then you've got the fire, which is the Shen, which is the conscious mind and the heart. And then you get round to the earth, which is the intellect. So depending on which aspect is stronger in a person, you can find a better way to communicate with them um, as a practitioner. And, and I'm still learning. This is like, you know, we didn't have enough five elements in my training and Nick wanted there to be more and so did I, but the other powers that were in the in the college I trained in did not, did not really, they wanted us to go strictly TCM and symptom based rather than this, you know, soul kind of perspective, which I love. Which is changing. It's so interesting because those meanings, I mean, we have in witchcraft, we have five, but we have earth, air, fire, water and spirit. Well, that's like the Tibetans used to have. They, 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 5,000 years ago, they had the five elements and the Chinese took them and changed them a little bit. So that's really interesting. It is because water holds love in my world and um, fire holds truth and farsight. Air holds mental clarity and also connection to spirit and spirit obviously is spirit. But earth is the physical body and the materialization and health. So it's the embodiment. Um it's just interesting, isn't it? It's kind of, you can kind of see it. I can see why the earth would be the conscious mind and intellect because earth to me is very practical, down to earth, can manifest. Fire, the conscious mind, no, because fire rules the third eye in my world and also the solar plexus and mm. sacral chakra. So the sense of self is fire, as is the uh, sense of relationship. And yeah, it's just interesting. There will be there will be commonality. I mean, it's not one or the other. There's 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 overlapping in perspectives because basically these ancient civilizations had connection to the galaxies and they knew stuff. We've lost it. We're getting it back. I feel now we're coming back to ourselves.
I'm watching at the moment, I don't know if either of you have seen it, um, Alexander the Great, the Alexander the God, it's called. And it's about, um, it's on Netflix. It's a series on Netflix and it's a docu-film series. And I think there's only six of them, but it charts the journey of Alexander. You know who I'm talking about, Alexander the Great. He's massive in all the fields I'm interested in, aromatherapy, astrology, everything. He's like one of the people that moved information across the world and certainly is responsible for Western astrology and, you know, Western aromatherapy. And it's fascinating because his journey as he like he comes from this tiny little country called Macedon and he takes on the Persian Empire, which is just enormous, Darius the third. And as he goes through his journey, he keeps making spiritual pilgrimages. When everyone else is going, no, we should carry on moving forward and fighting. He's like, no, I'm taking some months off and I'm going to go and pilgrimage to this sacred site. And in fact, he was made the Pharaoh of Egypt. It was just incredible. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that. And that's why they've got Alexandria. But I yeah. really recommend it because it's like, he was in the age of kind of, you know, wars and dominating and territory and land, but he still, and he was just, just an incredible man, still understood the importance of spirituality. And they're saying, oh, maybe it was a propaganda thing, but he put his life in risk many times to kind of travel across the Sahara to get to this particular place that people had died trying to get to, you know, so he wouldn't have done that unless he had this conviction he really did believe he was the son of um apollo and zeus so what just for a time frame i've forgotten what what era he was with what b b c about three four hundred b c okay okay because you know pam gregory talks a lot about this you know, the age of Pisces and the age of Aries before and how they were all about conquering and controlling and patriarchy and land and resources and, you know, people cutting them swathes through people because Mars rules Aries as well, right? So I yeah. think that was, we've still got that legacy, she says, and we this is where we're going to come into Aquarius, which is going to be a much more heart based 2000 and then we've got death and endings with pisces following that none of us will be alive in that point and then we get to the kind of we go back through the cycles again and start with aries but um it's interesting because in terms of um dowsing and history they the uh, the the feeling is that certainly in britain britain was like still ruled by the apolline earth cultures like the divinity the earth goddess all of that stuff um until 2490 bc so they can put and they say that was the advent of the bronze warrior people and the beaker people and they can look in our dna and see the dna change for 2490 bc so we're talking like 5000 years ago and it's so that has you know science has caught up with you know intuition <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Cooking away here, but, uh, you know, stirring her pot. But it's true. Um, <laughs> so there's kind of like, that's a really interesting thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that would have made it. So if we go back 5,000 years, if we're at the dawn of Aquarius, then that would be, so we're at the beginning of a new one. So we have to go back three. So we go back through Capricorn, that takes off two. Then we go back through into um, Sagittarius. That's another two. No, it's but the other way. It's Pisces and, and Aries. And then we're, we're kind of moving backwards. Okay. So if we've gone Pisces, so it was Aries. It's Aries then. That's what she was saying. Right. Okay. I wonder if that. Before that, it was Taurus. Yeah. 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 Which would have been, it would have been Taurus actually. Because yes. That's what Taurus represents. Taurus Earth. represents materializing, practical, no room for spirituality, greed. I want possessive. I will take that. Feels good. I'm having more of it. So I would say Taurus is kind of the era that would have yeah. brought that in. Because before that, it would have been 
Gemini. So everyone would have been really friendly and got on with each other. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> you like to think. Intellectual. <laughs> but definitely not boring and not possessive. Yeah. Gemini much more easygoing so it goes backwards like that does it okay that's what it seems that she's saying yeah well it does when you're in astrology everything runs backwards so mm. they're teaching a course in it at the moment and it just yeah it everything runs backwards wow there's so much to learn and you never stop honestly she and uranus is quite important in this new moon as well isn't it yeah, um, because i'm about to look up where um, no, no, I'm not about to look up because I did look up where Uranus is and it's in my fifth house, which is to do with health and self-healing and all that stuff. No, it's not. No, the fifth house is to do with creativity, children and romance. Oh, I looked up the wrong thing then. And Uranus is in a chart for, you know, um, a long time, 84 years. Just mm. let me just check that I've just told you the truth about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, I believe you. Four you know. years. That's how long its um journey is through the stars. Hang on. Yeah. Bear with me. One. I oh, know that won't tell me. Um, let me see if I can find something that actually makes sense. Well, it's it's not it's not in my chart that it's. Oh. No, no, Uranus no. Uranus is in the in the chart for this. Uranus takes seven years. She, she does, yeah. Uranus in my chart is somewhere else. But, right, no, but it's for, for this new moon, it's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Uranus, right, the new moon, a moon moves round, it transits every day, day and a half, two days, right? Uranus transits every sign or every house, sorry, for seven years. So it's like, so seven times 12 is, you know, 84. So that's its journey through the whole solar system is 84 years, right? Yeah, so doing all of this kind of stuff, and we hear these broad brushstroke kind of claims. It's like, oh, well, the new moon is in Aquarius. What you need to know is where does Aquarius, that new beginning, fall in your chart? That's yes. Which house is Pluto in? Which house is Uranus in? And if Uranus is squaring the moon, which it is in Taurus, where does that show up, that new beginning? Where is this new leveling? So for me, that's all happening in my fourth house. So the house. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. when it's that. Um, so I got it in. The that's amazing. So it's a glitch. It only happens when I say something worth listening to. Um, it's in the fourth house. And so that means I'm getting a new. But Aquarius is in the first house of new, like my self-identity. Everyone's self-identity is first house, like personal self. So there's a kind of like a rebalancing of how I feel about myself is going to have a tremendous effect on my home and family. Yes. Which is true. Yes. And and so Aquarius is my ascendant. So it must be in my first house too, right? My Maybe? ascendant is actually Capricorn. But yeah, it's so close. So right. yeah. yeah right. But in the, so it's in I'm your. Gonna, I'm going to go back and look now. Yeah. yeah. Again. So I've done yours, Tamar, so you can go and have a look at yours as well. I'm going to try and decipher it. it it's really just, just a picture. It takes me so long to figure it out. Lines. <laughs> It'll say to you, you've got Aquarius in this house and this is what it means. So is that what I'm looking for, where Aquarius is? Yeah, which house it's in and it'll tell you what the house means. Yeah, I'm hoping it's in work. And um, yeah. And if you want to come on my astrology course, and I will teach you more. <laughs> yes, I, I will be doing it. that at some point in the future. I feel more and more drawn towards that. Um, but yeah, I think I think this also this self identity thing comes up with what's currently happening with with the the oh what did he say? One of one of one of the elements is about self identity. In right a, now i mean right now in the wood dragon context yeah so i think that's that's very important probably for quite a few people well in the astrological thing it's saying definitely your because uranus is all about the individuality it's about your individual yeah. squaring the moon that's what i meant about the differences who are you what makes you unique there you go many people don't know who they are 
Yes. And they don't own it. They struggle. Yeah. And they they wait to be told who they are by external validation. And And if the person they're told is not, sorry, doesn't match their internal world, that's when you get trouble. I think we should close there. Because we've been nearly an hour. I haven't even had lunch yet. (laughs) I feel like we've only just started. (laughs) Interesting. But that's why we do this. We come together and we have these wonderful conversations. And we will be back in two weeks. We shall. See you all then. Tamar, do you want to close it? Because I think that was a wonderful closing. I don't think I can top it. Thank you very much. See you in two weeks. (laughs) Bye.